Welcome to our July A to J Author New User Webinar. I'm Jessica Frank, A to J Authors Project Manager. Today we're going to talk about simple and conditional branching. These are the two methods uh, for how you move your end user through an A to J guided interview. And another reminder, we had our Cali conference um, just a couple of weeks ago in Philadelphia, and you can check out the videos from the Cali conference on the Cali YouTube channel. Um, or by going to 2023.calicon.org um, and then checking out the different uh, sessions. And we did one on test driving document automation, which um, John Mayer, our executive director of Cali, and I presented on um, how to learn to automate a document in 45 minutes. So make sure to check that out. I'll put a link to it in the chat at the end of uh, the webinar. So today we're going to talk about four things on our agenda. What does branching mean? What is simple branching? What is conditional branching? And additional resources to continue on learning about document automation and about branching specifically. So what is branching? Branching is the ability to direct an end user to a particular line of questions or to avoid particular questions according to an answer that end user has given you. So for example, if the end user, if you ask the question, are you married? If the end user answers yes, then you're gonna continue to ask them follow-up questions about their spouse. If they say no, you're gonna skip that entire line of questioning. Branching is one of the key features of A to J Author and that it avoids making the end user answer irrelevant questions. A form is complicated in and of itself, and so you don't have to make the end user address questions that aren't relevant to them, unlike the paper form. So that's the, the perk of a guided interview, is that you can tailor the interview to the end user and don't make them go through a whole line of questioning that isn't relevant to their situation. However, it allows you to create one interview that meets many situations. So to the end user, they think they have a tailored interview specifically customized for them. They're only seeing the branches that they are supposed to go down. But on the back end, the interview actually um, allows many different people in many different situations to answer the questions and to get through to their completed forms. It also makes information gathering clear and efficient because the end user isn't wasting time going through those line of questions about their spouse or their children if that isn't applicable to their scenario and lets them continue on in the least amount of time necessary. With simple branching, you use buttons to direct the end user. You're directing the end user down a line of questions or helping them to avoid irrelevant questions. So for example, here, we are asking if the end user is married if they're married, we're gonna ask follow-up questions about the spouse and gather the spouse's information. But if they're not married, we can skip right past the spouse's information. Also at these, uh, these questions where there is a fork in the road, they either go down one path or another, you can add what is called a learn more to your A to J guided interview. A learn more is another key feature of the software and allows you to put just at the moment in which the end user need it, needs it, we call those just in time learning features. You can have additional information for the end user to allow them to answer this question. So while this may seem straightforward in the are you married, either yes or no, what if the end user is separated but actually not actually filed for divorce? Or what if they filed for divorce but haven't completed the process? Or what if they're widowed? All of those may be potentially legally relevant to the court form in which they're completing, if there is this scenario where what looks like a simple fork actually has a lot of heuristics around it or legally relevant information, add a learn more that, that the end user can say, you know, what if I'm not sure or what if my scenario doesn't apply here? And you can add in text, video, or audio, or all three to learn more to further explain to the end user how to answer this question if it isn't as straightforward as it might appear. Now, all of the work of simple branching is done via the button section of the question design editor. This is a screenshot of the question design editor. When you're in A to J Author, you will spend the majority of your time creating your interview in this question design editor. And there's different sections. So generally, you can go through scrolling through to the different sections or tabbing over if you're using the tabbed view. We have both options for um, authors. And when you get to the button section, you have the ability to add up to three buttons or to delete any that are currently there. Each interview does have to have at least one button, even if you ultimately override that button's destination with a conditional logic statement. In this section, you have the button label at the top, 
that is what the end user sees. That's what you call the button. It can be whatever you want. There's no limit or character limit on it. At a certain point, if you have a really long button label name though, it does start to mess with um, the positioning of the other buttons. So that comes out in testing. If you do have to have long text as the button label, just make sure you're previewing to see that it looks in the actual interview itself like you expect it to look. So you can call the button whatever you want. You can also assign a value to that button. So for example, in the are you married uh, question that I showed on the previous slide, you could have the buttons for yes or no direct the end user down different paths of the interview. So it forks them to different sections of the interview. But that same button can also store the value of say true or false to a variable like married TF. So maybe in my document, I'm going to need to produce a different or another template for the end user if they are married. And so I need to know, is married TF true or false? And you can set that via the buttons without then having a follow-up question that sets that variable. So it's, um, it's another convenient way for the end user. You only ask the question once, even if it's doing two things, both branching to a different path in the road and setting a variable's value. A new feature that was released last summer was the ability to add variables at the point in which you are, you are using them. So here in the button section, you can create a variable on the fly by clicking add new and the variable design editor will pop up just like on the variables tab, allowing you to um, not have to go to the variables tab to create new variables, but to just make them on the fly. The destination question is the way that you move your end user then to that next page. This is where the simple branching happens. When you click the set destination button, you are then taken to a list of pages in your interview to select from. It's gonna show you all the pages in your interview plus special exiting options that are included with every A to J guided interview. To learn more about exiting options, check out the video from last month our, on our YouTube channel. Here's what it looks like under the tabbed view. So I mentioned that we have both the tabbed view and the regular scroll view. We added this tabbed view last year for authors who prefer to focus on one section at a time and don't like the scroll. The content um, and all the editing for an interview is the same in either view. It's just an author preference if you wanna use full view, which is the scroll or the tabbed view here. If you are an author who's been around since the days of Flash with A to J Author, this is more reminiscent of that version on the back end. So there is some nostalgia there if you are, have been an author for a while. The only thing I didn't mention two slides ago on the button section um, when I was explaining the different options there was the repeat option field. So you can see it here at the bottom under the set destination option. This repeat option is used for questions that are part of a repeat loop. You can set the counting variable to one or increment the counting variable here. To learn more about repeat loops, check out the May 2023 video here at the link on our YouTube channel, which went over how to do repeat loops, how to gather the same sort of information for the end user over and over as many times as they need it by only creating one set of questions in the software. You can also check out the author, our sample exercises, which are on our website, a to jauthor.org, under the Learn tab to practice repeat loops and conditional logic, which I'll talk more about at the end. So each question in a guided interview can have up to three buttons. Each button can go to a different place and can be labeled a different thing. Each button then directs the end user potentially to a different next question. They also can go to the same question if you are using those buttons to gather the value of a variable and not using them for branching purposes. You can have a complex interview too that doesn't have any logic at all. So you can have a robust guided interview that has no logic and only moves the end user around with simple branching. This is a map view that shows a complex interview that doesn't contain any logic at all, but it has eight steps and a couple dozen questions. As an aside though, if you're ever presenting about A to J author and you want to impress your audience with the complexity of the hard work that you've put into your interview, hint, hint, you're showing funders or your boss, this is what you've been doing for all, the time, all this time, a screenshot of the map tab is a great way to do that. It's also a great way for you as the author to see the forest for the trees. When authoring, we can often get bogged down in the details of each individual page and maybe discouraged by the complexity of that work. But looking at the map tab lets you see how much you've built and to get that larger overview of your hard work. 
So the map tab is a great place to go to to get screenshots and to reflect. And you can also do editing on the map tab, which we talked about in a recent webinar. I think it was April's webinar where I talked about the, the underused features of A to J Author. So moving on to the second type of branching, conditional branching. Conditional branching is using advanced logic to create conditions to direct the end user to move them around. You're scripting logic statements that direct A to J author to override a button's destination and to analyze the end user's answers within variables to move them through the interview. You add conditions that evaluate the data that has already been entered by the end user, and each condition will determine which destination question to send the end user to. So logic doesn't have to be used for branching, but you can um, you can either manipulate the end user's data based on things they have told you, or you can move them around. So you, there are different commands in logic. If go to and if set, the go to and the set are the different um, commands you can do within A to J author. On the screen here, I have a couple of different answers. So if the user has selected that they are female, then they can go on to the are you pregnant questions. In the middle of the screenshot here, 4-income, I'm evaluating whether the end user's income falls between 25,000 and 40,000. Because if it does, I have my organization has some income guidelines about who can use this interview and I need to do some follow up questions about potential deductions or expenses that the end user might have if they fall in this middle zone. If their income is over 40,000, then they automatically don't qualify for to use my uh, guided interview and they're going to be directed to a page that says something like, sorry, you didn't, you don't meet the qualifications for this interview. Also released last year is the logic completion helper. When you type if into the logic statement and have an open bracket, A to J author is gonna show you a list of all the variables in the interview for you to pick from. When you type go to, it's also gonna show you all the pages in your interview that you can pick from that match those characters. So no more mistakenly typing the wrong variable name or the page name and breaking your logic statements. This helps you as authors make more complete interviews in a shorter amount of time. Additional resources for you to check out to learn more about authoring or to learn specifically more about conditional logic. You can go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash A to J author. We have a couple um, dozen videos, try to update them as we go through the year. Um, the most recent ones are from our June, May, and April A to J new user webinars, and you can check those videos out. You can also go to our authoring guide, which is at a to j author.org slash content slash a to j dash authoring dash guide, or by clicking the learn tab, and it will automatically take you into that. Within that section, if you go to the section on scripting conditions or advanced conditions, you can see different um, parts of the authoring guide that include the operators that can be used in logic statements, how specifically to, to um, script the statements, how to handle variables, how to handle go-to statements, how to handle spacing, all the different complexities of uh, scripting conditions within A to J. We also have sample exercises, as I mentioned, under the Learn tab on our website as well, on scripting conditions, on branching, and on repeat loops if you are interested in those. So those are short exercises, 30 to 60 minutes generally, some are longer, that have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the things that you're going to need to apply um, to your guided interview, but it's kind of like a worksheet. So you're in um, a contained universe, you have a contained set of goals that you're trying to work to, to teach you the skill in which you're trying to apply to your actual interview. As always, if you have questions, you can email me throughout the month, jessica at cali.org. Our next webinar is August 3rd, um, and uh, feel free to ask questions if you have them or send me those emails throughout the month. I will see you all again in August.